Um, what are the reasons, or some of the reasons? Well, the first, of course, is urgency. We need to respond quickly, we need to hit the ground running, and sometimes it is difficult to coordinate. Um, but most, of, uh, uh, most importantly, I think that there is this we-know-better syndrome. Um, and if you talk to people from the World Food Programme, they, and I think with some uh, right, say, we know better. The World Food Programme is probably the most logistically secure, sound operation that you will come across. Um, but will they share that right to planning and programming and coordination with others? No. They want to do it themselves, and they do it better than anybody else. But they do, by now, believe that you know, the sun shines from their behinds. Um, and then there is the issue of personal competition. There is tremendous competition between people, between different technical staff. Um, institutional competition, and competition that leads to very, very poor briefing uh, of staff. One of, the, one of the, if you, for those of you who are going into this area of work, and I hope you all do, um, ensure that before you go to the field, that you get proper briefing, that you get a clear understanding of what's being expected of you. Why are you being recruited? Is it because um, you're pretty? Um, is it because uh, they need to get 10 bodies um, into a location at a given time? Or is it because you actually have something uh, to offer? Be very clear on this. Um, so poor supervision. Um, a relief organization ideology, sources of funding, these are all confl conflicting areas of interest. Um, what does it lead to? I'm going to use some uh, uh, dramatic examples. Uh, this I've taken from uh, a, a report that we did. Um, one of the, in Bosnia, you could not, when you hit the airport, you had to, you had literally 10 seconds to get from the plane into shelter because there were snipers all around. What it meant was unloading a plane was extremely dangerous. In the um, four and a half years of the war, um, we got something like 34, um, almost 35,000 tons of drugs. Essential. Of course you need drugs. Um, up to 60% of everything that we received could not be used. We had drugs that were not, didn't have a name on them. We had drugs that had a name on them in languages that no one understood. We had drugs that had names on them but were so far outdated that no one ever even dared open them. Um, we had teams of pharmacists who sat at tables sorting out drugs that could not be identified, trying to figure out what they were. Um, the lack of coordination in drug supplies is probably the worst example of the lack of coordination. What did it mean? Those drugs sat in and around the airport for five years because we had no fuel to incinerate them. So the logistical consequences and the human consequences of people who were shot at the airport trying to unload uh, planes, the, the logistical and human consequences of poor coordination are not simply one that you don't speak or share planning together. It's much more profound uh, and far-reaching than that. Um, this is um, another camp where I worked in Macedonia, um, following the Kosovo crisis. Two weeks prior to that camp, I sat in a meeting where we had a whole group of NGOs and a UNHCR uh, official, and NGOs offered to take over camps. We've got 10,000 people coming in Sankovic. Who can handle 10,000? Everybody puts up their hand. Um, and you say, what, what do you have? Well, we have such and such a number of personnel, etc. And I've seen people be given a camp to run and suddenly run out, get onto a phone,
call the headquarters and say, we just got to camp, now we've got to get the people, the money and the tents. At that same meeting, UNHCR said, here are plans on how to develop, organize and structure a refugee camp. And they put them all on the table. Not one NGO picked up those guidelines. And this is what we had in response. This, is a re this was a refugee camp. Because the lack of coordination, the lack of willingness to take someone else's model and use it, put everybody at risk. So, um, as a result of the drug issue, now we have WHO um, guidelines on drug donations, and these are extremely uh, uh, pertinent and, and should be followed. Uh, we have uh, other guidelines. We have the consolidated appeals process. We have the flash appeal. We have the cluster approach. And now we have humanitarian coordinators. The situation is improving. I think that those of you who have experience in this area will say, yes, but none of these are actually working optimally, and that's true. But at least when we look back since Bosnia, which was really the turning point in humanitarian assistance, we have come a long way. But coordination is still extremely poor and is probably the underlying problem in successful humanitarian assistance. Thanks. That's it. Thank you very much. Goodbye.